an extra service? Yes, another math video. Yeah, we're looking at a whole new objective. Let's take a look, what do we have? Objective, relate fractions as division to fraction of a set. All right, kind of a new concept here with that Eureka Math program. Let's take a look at this first problem here. Now, you might even, if you had some counters at home and maybe some straws, you could actually do, a, do this with me. But basically, what we're going to be looking at here is we have one-third of six. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an array with my six counters, okay? So I'm going to pull these fellows out, okay? And I have two, and then I'm just going to make an array with these six counters. And you can see I've just made an array. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to divide these into three equal parts. Okay, and I'm going to divide these into three equal parts because this is what I have as my denominator right here. Okay, I have a three. So I'm trying to find one-third of six. So I've put my six counters up. I've divided my counters into three equal parts. Now, um, I can write a division sentence showing what I just did. I took six, I went divided by three equals, and you can see there are two in each part. So I could also rewrite this division sentence as a fraction. All right? You may recall six divided by three. All right? So six divided by three is going to equal two. Now, if, if I want to show one-third of this set, how many counters would I have? Okay, well, let's see. Take a, let's take a look. So one-third, because I have one-third here, one-third there. So I'm just going to pull in another color. In fact, you know what? Better yet, I'm even going to grab this guy. The red ones now represent one-third of my six, which, again, one-third one and I'm going to get another pen here. So one-third is this much right here. So one-third of six then is equal to two. So I can also show two-thirds of six, and that's going to be equal to four. So if I wanted to even go further, what I could do is I could say I'm going to represent these two with red as well, and now I have four. Come back up here. So now I have four. And then finally, I have three thirds, which is all of them, of six would equal, of course, six. All right, and then I got this. So thinking out loud, let me bring in my biker dude friend. Come on, biker dude. Yeah. Okay, so six divided into three equal groups, each group is equal to two. And this is how we determine that one-third of six equals to two. And this is a really important idea because we're talking about a fraction of a set. Our set was six. We divided that six counters into three equal groups. Therefore, six divided by three equals two. There were two counters here in each group. So one-third of that six, then, is going to, going to be two of these counters, four counters here represents the two-thirds because we have one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds. So two-thirds represents four of six, which is of that set. So we're relating fractions as divisions, division to fraction of a set. Move to the next page. And let's look at another problem here. Let's look at one-fourth of 12. Okay, again, what we want to do right from the get-go Yes, is it to make an array. Let's make an array. Now, by making that array, we could make different types of array. We could make an array of 6 and 2, because 2 times 6 is 12. But let's make an, just make an array so that we have 4, since we have a denominator here of 4. So let me go ahead and get this. Okay, now, let me bring this guy out. Because we want to go ahead and separate this, so we want to put these in groups of four. So here's one, you can see right here. Yeah, and then I'm going to, you see here, what I have is I've represented an array. 
I have 3 here, and I've got 4 going across. Of course, 3 times 4 is 12. Now what I want to do is I want to say uh, how many counters would I have in that very first uh, one quarter if I took one quarter of 12. Well, let's go ahead and get an counter here. You can see I would have three counters represented here to show my one-fourth. So one-fourth of 12 then is going to equal is going to equal th to 3 and now I can also do 2 fourths and I'm going to write that over here so 2 fourths then of 12 is going to be 3 more so I have 6 3 fourths of 12 so now I have this group another group another group 3 6 I have 9 and of course if I take four fourths of 12, that's all of them, would be all 12. And this is the way that it can be represented. Okay, and do we have another biker dude? Yay, it's the same guy. So when we take 12 and we divide it into four equal groups, each group is going to have three. So one quarter of 12 is three, just like we basically said. I'm going to do that. That is a letter. Please don't be confused. That is a letter. Okay, let's go on to the next problem. So let's look at this problem here. It says Mrs. Acosta has eight apples. She wants to give three quarters of the apples to her students. How many apples will her students get? Okie dokie. Let's take a look. Well, if I was going to make an array, I'm thinking eight apples. I'd want to show an array of eight apples. And since I have fourths here, I'd want to make an array such that I could break eight up into four equal groups. All right, so let me go ahead and use red here since the apples are red, all right? So I'm thinking two, four, six, eight. So I could make an array four times two. And let's give a little bit more space here so we can get our line in. Okay, and we're gonna want that. So we can put him in there, right, to divide him up. And now I'm basically done. There we go. So now I have my eight apples. I want to give, she says that she wants to give three quarters of the apples to her students, three quarters. Well, I have one quarter here, one quarter here, one quarter here. So this here would be three quarters. Let's go ahead and do that and show that work. Because this here is one quarter. Here's another group. Here's two quarters. And then here's three quarters. And then of course, four quarters. So if this, we have two in each quarter. And so one quarter of the, of the eight is going to equal two. Two quarters of the eight is equal to four which is half, that's a benchmark. So three quarters of eight then is going to equal six. And that is basically, so her students will get six apples. So if we were to answer that problem, her students, or Miss Acosta's students, her students will get six apples. And that's to all her students. And let's go one more problem. Let me see here. Okay, well, let's look at this problem. It says, in a class of 24 students, five six are boys. How many are in the class? Well, we know that there are 24 students in the class. So basically, what is the question that's being asked of us? And it's basically, how many boys are in the class. Important to understand that. Well, basically, what fraction of the whole class of 24 then are going to be boys? And we know that's 5, 6. But that doesn't tell us actually how many boys. But we can look at this number and we can say, well, 5, 6 is more than half. And looking at our benchmark fraction, because 3, 6 would be half. So 5, 6 means 
that it's going to be more than half, which means we can we can basically come to the reasoning that there will be more than 12 boys in the class. And we can use counters again to solve this problem. We should pro probably draw a, like a 24 of our counters here to show them and then split them into six equal groups since we have our fraction. So that way we'll have um, circles. And that way we can take a look at how many boys are in uh, five of those six groups. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I have one made here already. So I'm going to just pull this guy out here. Okay, so here you can see what we've done here is we've made our six groups. One, two, three, four, five, six groups. Okay, so this is helpful because this lets us, ooh, let me get a pen here. See, so this lets us see that there's six groups right here going across. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have our six groups. Now it's just depending on how many we have in each group. Well, we have four in each group. And if you recall, we had this problem before, 24 Okay, divided by, we have those six groups, is going to equal four. So that way we have four in each group. And we could write that as a fraction, if you recall. Okay, like, like so. Now, I have my one group has four. So now it's almost like I'm taking one group, the second group, the third group, the fourth group, and the fifth. So five groups, if I were to look at the five out of the six groups that there are, and there's four in each group, you can see I can take four and multiply that one, two, three, four, five. Now I have 20. Therefore, 20 of the students are boys. That's quite a bit of boys. They're out of 24 students. So 20 students are boys. And we can determine in every fraction. So 1 6, we have 4. In 2 6, we have 8. Well, in 3 6, we have 12. And it just keeps on going. Okay? I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, we do need to come over here. Okay, my friends, that does end another fun-filled video on related fractions and division to fractions of a set. Now, live long and prosper.